535, Lord, lay some soul upon my heart. We'll sing all three verses. Lord, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. And may I faithfully do my part to win that soul to me. Lord, there are souls that I should win. very kindly. You may be seated. Pastor. It's on. It's working. That's wonderful. But of course, I'm loud enough to be heard anyway. My wife should have been preaching in the family. Now, without her mask, her voice carries. My voice is kind of muffled, doesn't carry too well, but I'll tell you, her voice can carry. It's a trait that she shared with, and still shares with her older sister. And when she comes down from Washington State and they get together, I mean, she's in one end of the house, the sister's in the other end of the house, and they carry on conversation. <laughs> but anyway, get back to some serious business. Are we ready for some serious business, Miss Sandy? Yes. Yeah, let, let's, let's do some serious business now. I'll let you go first with serious business. Um, right now, I'm going to present to Mrs. Dodson a bag <laughs> full of goodies. Um, from all of you, basically, things that have come from our giving tree, and then some other things as well that I have shopped for. <laughs> <laughs> and something, um, some things for all of you, some things for each individual person in your family. So this is for you. Okay, it's Linnell's turn. Um, so from the ladies of our church, through Bread of Heaven, which you know what it is, um, all the proceeds go to our missionary wives, and we would like to give that to you. Yeah. And that's for you. It's just for you. Not for the kids, not for Rob. That's going to be really hard. Well, I know, but you can do it. All right. Uh, Nolan? Are you behaving? Uh, yeah, you laugh. Uh huh. You you seem out of the whole bunch the one that has the most energy. Uh, do you eat Wheaties? He's looking at me like uh, Wheaties comes in a big box like that. It's kind of a red box, or it used to be. And on the on the label of the cereal, it would say "Breakfast of Champions." You don't eat Wheaties. Well, I don't know where you get your energy, but come on, you're going to help me. I want to help you. you. You got all the energy anyway, even if you don't eat Wheaties. Sometimes I tell people they need another bowl of Wheaties because they don't have enough energy. Now, can you take all of your? Do you know what a sibling is? Okay. Can you take all these siblings of yours and line them up in correct age order? Right across here. Now. See the energy? 
Well, I wish I could get Brother Stevens to have that kind of energy. <laughs> Line them up. Uh huh. All right. Now you got them all in order. The they just took their proper order. Okay, you ready? Let me get this mic down here. We're going to start out with uh, what's his face there on the end. That's, <laughs> Which end? Uncle Bryce. Yeah, Which end? That's Ryan. All right, Ryan, come on up. <laughs> Turn around and face those people. Did you tie that tie? You didn't tie it? <laughs> that looks pretty sharp. Pretty sharp. Mm. Nice looking outfit. The old Where are you preaching tonight? <laughs> you know, preaching anywhere tonight? Lead and sing it, brother. That's the song. You, you're going to help the song leader? That's it, brother. That's good. All right, uh, let me tell you what we're doing. And uh, we'll see, see if you can help me with it. Oh, by the way, what grade are you in? Second. Second grade. Do you have, you have arithmetic in the second grade? Mom, math. It, it, it's math. You have, you have math. Uh, you don't use multiplication yet, do you? Have you, have you heard of that yet? You haven't heard of that? You, you do adding, don't you? All right, we'll see how well you can add. How old are you? Six. Six. If you're six, And I gave you something, and it was one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be whatever I gave you, one for each year of your age. Got it? Yes. Now, if I give you two for each year of your, how old are you? Six. Six, okay. Nothing's changed. <laughs> so if I were to give you two of whatever I give you, for each year of your age, how many would I give you? Twenty. Twelve. Twelve? How did you figure that out? You got a calculator. You got a calculator. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what we do. When a missionary comes to our church and he brings children, then we find out the age of the children, and you said your age was? Uh, six. Six, okay, I just wanna make sure nothing had changed. <laughs> uh, in fact, when I, when I get up the line, somebody will change their age in a hurry. <laughs> but, uh, so we're going to give you a gift. Our church is giving you a gift for the number of years you are. How many? Six. Six, okay. <laughs> so we're going to give you six and then we're going to give you six more. And how many would that be? What did your sister tell you? Twelve. Twelve, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is for you, just for you. You want to look inside? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> How much is in there? That'll be 12. 12. 12 what? $12. 12 dollars. All right, uh, you, uh, you may go to your seat now. Good job. Don't get back in line, it won't do you any good. And let's see, Hope is next. Can you answer that question I asked him? How old are you? Eight. Eight. Eight plus eight would be? Eight and eight more. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, then 
if you were ha having higher math in school, it would be eight times two would be 16. Okay? All right, so you're eight, and therefore there's a gift in here for you. You want to check it and make sure it's correct? <laughs> yeah, you, you better check it. <laughs> How much is in there? 16. Very good. You may go to your seat. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> All right. This Wheaties guy. Now the Wheaties <laughs> kid. How old are you, Nolan? Nine. And nine, and nine is? 18. You got it all figured out in advance. Smart kid. Very good. All right, that's yours. You, you don't trust the treasurer? You gonna check it out? D does that come out to 18? Yes, sir. All right, and that's all that counts. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Faith. And you are? 11. 11, and 11, you can do multiplication, right? Yes. So 11 times 2. 22. That's good. <laughs> Thank right. you. That, that's yours. Thank you. So you trust the treasurer? Very good. <laughs> they trust you back there. That's good. All right, uh, Brendan. I don't want to ask Brendan any speeches because he will make, he'll make one. <laughs> so how old are you, Brendan? 14. And 14 times 2? 28. 28, okay. You get 28. Thank you. You're welcome. That's the shortest conversation he and I have ever had. <laughs> Nathaniel, you are? 16. And that means you get? 32. You're correct. Thank you. And Grace? 19. 19. And 19 is? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what, what grade are you in? I graduated. You graduated. Oh, you ought to be able to figure this out with an algebraic equation. It's 38. Th oh, th that's good enough, 38. And Bryce. Now, Bryce, are you the oldest? Yes, sir. By how long are you the oldest? Two minutes. <laughs> well, that's a big enough deal. So that means you must be the same age as Grace? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A prayer and an offer. Uh, a prayer and an offer. I can take care of that, and then we're going to turn the service over to Dad. And he'll be in charge from that point onward. Let's have prayer. Dear Father, your son told us it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I confess unto thee that I, I needed to learn that early in my Christian life. And the sooner all of us learn that, the better it will be for us because it will bring honor unto thee and keep us from being selfish, which is so natural, as you know. So in Christ, we go beyond the natural life into a new life, a spiritual life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you for giving us the ability individually to give to church and then as a church body to be able to have funds at times in which we can have fun, just like tonight. Thank you for that. So you bless what we're seeking to do in your name. We give thee honor and we give thee thanks for all things so that we may give to others. Bless this service. In Jesus' name I ask, amen.
So, uh, Ms. Fallon asked if we were going to have a, a, a video put together to, for a presentation. Um, I had told her Wednesday night I didn't know if we were going to have one put together or not. Um, but I got to give credit to Linnell. Linnell put this together. She, um, I think all the kids, myself, but helped her um, put this together. Um, but she, she put it all together. Um, so it's a very short clip or video. It's probably about three minutes and uh, 17 seconds. But basically, it just gives our heart. It gives our heart to the mil military over in Germany. So thank you, Leno. I appreciate it. finding that music as well and uh, I think the part that ever that always gets me when every time I see that video is when who's gonna who's gonna go and then when it when it goes to us it, it gets me every time pastor Dean I want to thank you I want to thank you for allowing me to um, preach 
Um, you have given me many opportunities, um, and I will continue to do so. Church family, I appreciate your love and your support. Um, this is definitely a family. This is definitely a family. I appreciate your love and kindness. It is a privilege, again, to preach here. Especially during our first mission conference. Um, when you came to me and asked me, I took that as a privilege. The first time I ever preached was India. I went on a mission trip to India, and um, we were stationed over in Tampa. I was over there at McDill. Um, but we were, we were members of Westgate Baptist Church over there. That's uh, Brother uh, Bruce Turner. Um, he was the pastor then. And uh, he had asked, he had asked, he's like, um, I'm planning on going on a trip to India. Does anybody want to go? Now, mind you, on one of my deployments that I went on, uh, one of the barbers was from India. And so I got to talking to him and knowing quite a bit about India and all that. So when he asked that question, I turned to her and she's like, you want to go, don't you? Now, my, being mindful, I, I, I knew we didn't have the funds for, for me to go. But got on our knees, prayed about it. The Lord supplied. So we go, we head to the airport. We get there with uh, um, Brother Turner. And um, we get there, and he checks in before us. And he says, so they're looking for him. They can't find him. They can't find a ticket for him. About that same time, he gets a phone call. Um, so he takes the call. In the meantime, they're still looking. They can't find him. I go ahead and I check in. Well, he turns to me and goes, hey, they don't have a ticket for me. Um, but I need to stay behind and take care of a matter. He's like, you can wait for me, or you can go on forward, and, and then I'll just, I'll join you there. Well, being in the military, I had already put in for leave, and I, don't, I couldn't extend my leave. So I just told him, I said, hey, I'll go on forward. And, it, and so I got... Um, Brother uh, Moses' information, he's the missionary that was over there in India. I got his information, so I went on, on forward. I get, into, I get into Bangalore. Mindful, I, I didn't know any Hindu or anything there to speak to anybody. I was able to speak to, I think it was an officer or a military member there that was there, and he showed me to a phone booth. Well, I had Brother Moses' uh, phone number, so I called, and one of his sons answered the phone. So I'm talking to him, and he said, well, he's there. They're there. Mom and Dad is there. And I was like, well, okay. I've never seen them before. So everybody kind of looks the same, <laughs> except for one guy. So... I'm looking around. I'm like, I think I found them. I said, what are they wearing? He, he explained it, and I found them. I went up to him. I was like, I'm so glad that you, I found you guys. So um, we were supposed to be there part of a conference that was going on. They were having um, a bunch of preachers come in from all over India to come in. And so we were going to spend... A couple days there in Bangalore because um, he oversaw a couple churches in Bangalore and then we were going to jump on a train and, and take this train about five hours uh, uh, north of there to where his actual mission is at. So the other part of it was my luggage did not show up. So we get there and I can't find, my luggage hasn't arrived, it got sent somewhere else. 
So they got her information. It was like, hey, we'll bring it to the hotel whenever it comes in. Well, yeah, it did come in, and they finally brought it to the hotel the next day. So we, we go to the hotel. A semi get cleaned up. Um, so then the next day, we went to go get me some, at least uh, some pants, some slacks, and a, a shirt and tie, and then uh, um, some shoes. Because all I had was like tennis shoes and jeans and I think a t-shirt or something. So we go and get some clothes and stuff, and then we go, go to lunch. And he, he says to me, um, well, since Brother Turner's not here, do you mind preaching? And I went, uh, never preached in my life, but I was like, sure, okay. So I was like, so I spent like all night just studying and putting together a message. So I go, we go to the first church and I preach that morning. Then we go to lunch and he goes, hey, that went very well. He's like, you mind preaching at the next church? I was like, sure, and I'm going to do the same one again. <laughs> so, so that was my first time preaching. And then throughout the years, I've, I've been able to preach here and there. Uh, I, when I got back to Westgate, I think Brother Turner had me ended up preaching as well. So when Brother Turner finally got to India, I said to him, told him how everything transpired. And so, and so he looks at me, he goes, he says this, he goes, well, brother, you've been baptized by fire, haven't you? And I said, yes, sir. So I think it was right then, that's when, when the Lord started speaking to me about preaching. Many of you know my family, so I don't really have to introduce them. But... Let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. Lord, we thank you for this church family. Lord, I ask you just to continue to have your hand upon the family, Lord. Lord, as we continue to uh, work and strive to uh, fulfill that great commission, Lord. Lord, just be with me. Give me the right words to speak your message, Lord. I ask all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you have heard my testimony. Um, I was raised in a Roman Catholic home. Um, right before I joined the Air Force, I started questioning a lot of things. So I was searching. I was searching for the truth. Um, so then I met Linnell um, in maintenance tech school. Uh, she, a number of times, she shared the gospel with me. Um, some people have shared the gospel at work. Uh, I remember going to go check my mail once, and an airman comes over to me and hands me a chick track. And that chick track was the Titanic one, because that was the big movie at that time. So I took it back to my room, and I ended up reading it, and I kind of like set it to the side. So then over the years, like she would come and visit, and then we would, um, so I was looking for a church, because she was stationed at Charleston Air Force Base. I was at Eglin up in Fort Walton. So now her dad was stationed there at Eglin, and they, had, they were members of Calvary Baptist Church there in Fort Walton. So she said, hey, let, let's, go, let's go to this church. I was like, okay. So we visited there, heard the gospel, still not, still not hitting, right? Still rejecting it. Well, she had, she had a bunch of medical stuff that was going on. So she came down, and then we drove up. We were heading up to Georgia, Fort Gordon. But en route to Fort Gordon, we ended up stopping off and visiting some friends of hers. Uh, they were actually friends of the family. We go there, and then they invited us to their church. The gospel was presented there. I was white-knuckled. I was holding on to that pew, but the Lord kept telling me, you need to go, you need to go forward. 
Mrs. Wiggs and Linnell, they go down, and they're up front. And I later heard, heard, heard the conversation. But they went forward, and he, the Lord kept dealing with me. And I finally just let go, and I was like, and I made that first step. And when I made that first step, I was like, I'm committed. I went forward. The associate pastor came down, grabbed me. He's like, I, I started to kneel down, and he, like, he grabbed me. He's like, what do you need? I said, I need to know him. I need to know him. He's like, good. He takes me back to his office. We go to his office, and he's got a couch in there. We're sitting on the couch, and he's going through the, through the plan of salvation with me. And he's like, all right, you ready to get saved? And I'm like, I'm ready. He said, we're going to kneel down right here, and I'm going to lead you through this, what we call the sinner's prayer. And I was like, let's do this. We get down, and he didn't even have to lead me. I just started praying. I was crying, bawling, snot running, everything. June 14, 1998. That's when I accepted the Lord as my Savior. We go, he takes us back out after I'm still red-eyed and all that stuff. The snot was gone, all that stuff. He takes me out and, and shared with the Wiggses and Linnell. And it was amazing. What I found out, what she was saying to Miss Wiggs when they went down, she told Miss Wiggs, she's like, Rob's not saved. Miss Wiggs turns around and goes, Look. And saw me coming down the aisle. That's when I got saved. Two thousand four, I felt the Lord was calling me, calling me to be a missionary, and that was right around the time that I went to India. Because when, when we got back from India, I talked with uh, Brother Turner, and I said, I, f I feel he's calling us to India. And he said to me, he said, the motions are really high. He said, pray about it. Pray about it, and then we'll talk. Prayed about it. We felt like that's where the Lord was sending us. Uh, that's the direction we were going. It was in 2015 that that's when, when um, when I felt the Lord was because we felt the doors were closed. The door closed in, on India, and I think, I think when that happened, we were like. Okay, where, Lord? Where to? I think the Lord was wanting to know, are we willing? Are we willing to take that step? And I think when we proved that we, could, we were taking that step and we were in, that's when he was like, okay, you're in, but I want you to go here. So in 2015... Um, I was up for promotion. Um, I didn't get picked up for promotion. I took it very hard. I had two airmen that texted me that, that day that I found out that I didn't make promotion. They both sent a long text and how much they were upset that I didn't make it. I got to thinking about it how much of effect that I've had on those airmen or possibly others. I called Linnell on the way home that day. I was talking to her on the phone and I, I told her, I said, I'm upset. 
But it hit me. It hit me. Because we still didn't know where to or whom. You know the women always know, right? Before the men, right? Okay? But she didn't want to tell me that. She didn't want to influence me. But I said, I think I know. I was bawling. She said, Rob, it's been right in front of your face the whole time. I said, you're right. Why do you think the military, why has the Lord kept me in the military as long as he has? To, to all the experiences that I've had throughout my career to be able to help the military. So we knew it was to the military. We just didn't know when, where to. Where to. I think it was later in 2015, that's when, when the Lord revealed that it was to, in Germany. Now, we, uh, I went myself, I went by myself, I went to uh, uh, the Mission Possible European Retreat. Um, Pastor Stevens, Mrs. Stevens know about it. So I went there by myself. And just amazing. Um, so then, I think it was two years later, I ended up taking Linnell and we went. But that's when he really revealed everything to whom and to where. I have a message called Following God's Call. Listening to God's call. Examples of who, who listened to God's call. Noah. Noah was one. Genesis 6, 14a. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Abraham. Genesis 2. The burnt offering. The son. Jonah. Jonah 3, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. He told him to go preach in Nineveh. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord, now Nineveh was exceeding exceeding great city of three days' journey. So it took him three days to get there. Like I said, it was the second time. He didn't, he didn't obey right away. But maybe if he would have obeyed the first time, he wouldn't have had to spend that time in the belly of a whale, right? Paul. Paul was another one. Another example. Went where God told him to go. Acts 13.4 So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto, what was that, Shalusha? And forth... And, for, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Acts 16.10 And after he had seen the vision, immediately we in, endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. My second point, we must listen to God's call. Romans 14, 12. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Acts 5, 20, 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God 
rather than men. Following through God's call. Need to follow through. Even when it may be hard, and we may not know the details of his call. It's like I said before, being willing to take that step. Take that faith. We don't, we don't, need to, we, we don't know all the details. We put our trust in him. Like I said, we were heading in the direction to India, and then the doors closed. And I said, we believe that this was him seeing if we were willing. But we kept pressing forward, seeking his will for our lives. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, in, in 2015 uh, was when the Lord revealed he wanted us to be missionaries to the military. Even when others don't understand. Some people were at times saying, ah, you should stay in. You should stay in and retire from the Air Force. Well, I did stay in. I am retiring from the Air Force, but I didn't do it because they, and they told me, which goes back to what I said before, listen to a man. I listen to him. Because by listening to him, he kept me in as long as I did for those experiences to help minister to the military. Some people were saying, ah, it's too far. You have no relatives. Did y'all think that? Yeah. We had to do that when we moved to Montana. We had no family, family out there. We had to rely on each other. Now we met friends and got in a good church there and, and had some friends there that helped out. I think, I think being away helped our relationship. Our relationship, but helped our relationship. Some people were saying, oh, I'll be too hard. Might be hard. Christ endures, endured persecution and gave his life for us. Was that too hard for him? When we do what God tells us to do, we should do it immediately. Acts 9.20 And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Paul immediately went, started preaching after his eyes were open. I knew I needed to begin to follow God. by schooling. I'm working on my master's. Linnell said to me years ago, we're going to be life students. I was like, yeah. But I love, I love learning. I love learning. By you completing your master's, that's motivated me to finish mine. I believe I'm going to continue to <laughs> go and get that education. Um, I don't think 
I don't think there's a doctor in my, in my family, I mean, other, other than Linnell. But in my blood family, I don't think there's a doctor in my family. Later, did, we did find that there was a preacher in my family. Years past. Timing. He is coming soon. He is coming soon. But we need to still be responsible for what he called us to do. Presenting the gospel to the lost and fulfilling that great commission. I never thought a small town boy as myself as a preacher. I've had a lot of lot of influences in my life. Preachers. And I'm I'm very lucky to have two in front of me to train me and teach me. So in conclusion, are you listening to God's call? Are you like Noah, Jonah, Abraham, and Paul? It doesn't just have to be on the, on the mission field somewhere. Our mission field is right outside those doors. Right here in this local area. Brother Gary, keeps, he keeps talking to me. He keeps trying to get, trying to get me to go. But every time I, something comes up, something breaks... <laughs> I got a truck, a vehicle, or some vehicle. I got to fix the dryer now. But something keeps coming up. But he, 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 mentioned, it, he mentioned it to me. He goes, he said, uh, it's just the devil. The devil is just working, trying to keep you from going. Isn't that right, Zach? There's many other examples in the Bible, people um, following that call. Are you following through God, with what God, um, God's call? Even when it may be hard, and we may not know the details of His calling. Even when others don't understand. There's a lot of people that that I work with, they don't understand. Why are you wanting to move away from your family, your relatives? When we do what God tells us to do, oh, the blessings that we will receive. That, that first time that I preached in India, I think, I think it was the first church. Um, a woman came forward. She came forward. I didn't later find out until um, that afternoon what actually happened, but Brother Moses said, yeah, she came forward to get saved. And knowing that country, it took a lot of courage for her to do that. I think the second time I went back to India and I ended up preaching there, 
Um, there was a woman that came forward, but um, some gentlemen have to, had to take care of her. She was a little um, possessed, um, so I had to deal with that. I was I had to step back because I thought she was coming after us. Um, but what are you doing? Are you answering that call? Are you following God's call? Let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I thank you for everything that you've given me, Lord. And I thank you for this, this message, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to just have your hand upon my family as we answer your call. Lord, I ask you to just be with my church family. Work in their lives, Lord. Help us to continue to reach our mission field right outside these doors. And Lord, if somebody's watching tonight, Lord, that doesn't know you, that tonight would be their night of salvation, Lord. Work in those hearts. Work in their minds. And Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll stand for prayer, please. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Out of respect to the God before whom we stand, and also on the earthly level that we may look inside of ourselves. Are we willing to do what God wants us to do? He may call you to another country. He may just call you to your neighbor. Just answer the call of God. Heads are bowed. Is God placing a call upon your life? I don't know. I just ask the question. Coming up on October the 2nd this year will be 65 years ago that I stood before the home church and asked people to pray for me. I wanted to do initially what Brother Dodson has done and other men in this church, and that is fulfill a life of commitment, a whole career, 20 plus years in service to my country. But that Sunday night during that revival meeting, I just sensed that I would not be able to do that because God might want me to preach. I didn't know. So I presented myself before the church, asked for their prayer. And as the saying is, the rest is history for us. Is someone tonight needing to be saved? Are you sure that you know the Lord? Not just know about him, but you know him. Are you sure? You say, Pastor, I'm gonna come and speak to you tonight because I'm not sure that I'm saved. And I wanna be sure. I can help you, other people here can help you by taking you to God's word. Come hurriedly. Maybe you want to do what some of us have done from time to time over the years, and that is present yourself for service for the Lord. Full time, maybe, if that's God's will. You never know until you pray, you seek the face of the Lord, and you ask others to join you in that endeavor.
All right, let me have your attention, please. Linnell, that was an excellent video. Excellent. Excellent choice of music, too, to, to back it up. It, 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 you need to throw more things together. <laughs> Just throw them together. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you could have planned any better than that. Uh, maybe could, but anyway, it was great. Uh, I'd use that if I were you. That's good. Say it louder. This song is called In Honor, and it is it was written by some of the military and veterans. How about that? Wonderful piece of music. And uh, I'd make a recommendation. Take some of those pictures, like of the country. Everybody wants to know what's another country like. What, what, are, you, what are you going to see when you get there? What would you experience? I'd take some of those pictures and uh, put them on your display out there. That'd work great. Now, Let's talk about money. I like talking about money. You know, every time I go to church, that's all I ever hear them talk about anyway is money. Well, I like to talk about money, mine and yours. Because, yeah, <laughs> I know you do. But uh, what was I going to say, sweetheart? <laughs> but anyway, uh, it just, I, I, I like talking about my money, your money, because it's all God's money. And uh, we don't need any more of your offerings tonight, now. But if you want to put something in plate, it's up to you. But uh, we don't, don't need it. Tell you why. I was thinking Brother Dodson was going to fill in because Brother Alexander could not be here tonight. And I appreciate it very much. On a short notice, he's available. Amen. I learned in school the first ability is availability right and then I was thinking now how could we honor him so I spoke to the treasurer and uh, I thought about a check for $400 then I thought a little bit more and I said no nah, 500 and then this week somebody came by the house nobody in this church and left me a check for $500. Hmm, that's nice. And especially, <laughs> uh, the bottom left, it says, Pastor's Discretion. So, Brother Treasurer, have you already written a check for 500 Not yet, but you will, will you, please, sir? Yeah. And uh, just put this in the missions account, and then we'll just give him a check for 500 And what you've given and will give next Sunday morning in a love offering will still be divided as we always plan among the four families that were pre-scheduled to be here. Everybody happy? Yes. Amen. Everybody happy? Say amen. amen. Everybody happy? Say amen. I can't remember the rest of the chorus, but uh, I do like the one that goes, after all he's done for me. After all he's done for me, how can I do less than give him my best and live for him completely? After all he's done for me. Let's have a prayer. Father, thank you for the family of God that gathers here and in other places around this world at different times. We're going to all meet as a family one day. But until then, our family is sort of small and confined here, and that's okay. This is what you have planned for us. Thank you for the generosity of these friends and their love for other people. Help us to continue that. I pray in the Savior's name. Amen.